On today's show, we're gearing up for the opening round of the 2023 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. And to get you in the mood, we'll be revisiting all the excitement from the sixth round of the 2022 season, where ASBK teamed up with the World Superbikes at the Phillip Island Grand Prix circuit. This is Speed Week. Nine months since we last visited this iconic venue for the year's opening encounter, we are back at the spiritual home of Australian motorcycle racing. Hello and welcome to Phillip Island for round six of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul. The championship point situation heading into round six sees Mike Jones hold a 29 point lead over defending champion Wayne Maxwell with five races left in the championship. Brian Starring still holds down third place, a further 24 points behind Maxwell and is still very much a championship challenger. And what a place this is to ride too. Turn one, 210 kilometres an hour, back down through the gearbox there, breathing on the brakes, quick acceleration burst up to the southern loop. Keep it steady through the middle of that corner. Get on the gas nice and early through one of the most iconic corners on this track. Third gear, 270, sideways through there into the newly named Miller Corner. Be careful here, you can get caught out on the way out. We've seen people high side out of there before. Head towards the ocean into Siberia, turn five. On the left, you might see some shoulders scraping the ground there. Click up through the box, 90 kilometers an hour, all the way up to the famous hay shed corner where you hit 160 kilometers an hour. So critical to get the line right through that one, all the way out to the edge of the track. Click back through the box and up over Lukey Heights into the hard braking corner through there at 100 kilometers an hour down into MG. Quick click through the gearbox out of this one. Want to get through first, second, third gear on the edge of the tyre. You can really feel it squirming through here, out to the edge of the track and onto the most important corner at this circuit, turn 12. Really important to get a good drive out of there. Tuck down under the screen, get over that finish line and get a great lap time. A great lap time it was for Josh Waters in qualifying. He took the Boost Mobile Racing Ducati V4R Panigale to a sensational time that will have caught him, qualified him very high on the World Superbike grid, and he was extremely happy with it as well. His teammate Wayne Maxwell also joins him on the front row of the grid, and also Daniel Falzon, who set a blistering lap time to secure second place. Race one got underway with a very wet track under the riders. There was a bit of a collision between Crew Halliday and Arthur Cece's as they made their way off the line. But Daniel Falzon got a rocketing start from the front row of the grid and led them through turn one. But then it was an attack of the Boost Mobile Ducatis with Maxwell swooping past on the entry into turn two and then crashing out at the exit of turn two. His championship challenge here at Phillip Island could have been badly affected by that mistake. Yeah, he just got on the gas a little bit too early there. And as he watches the rest of the field go by, he'll be ruining that mistake. Matt Walters was another one to go down early on. These guys really needed to get down to business. Brian Starring, a group of four there, Glenn Allerton in the back of that, and Herfoss had some really good pace early on, but it was Starring just easing into things. He's the guy that's done the most wet weather laps in practice, and I tell you what, keep an eye on him for later on. Yeah, it was no surprise to see Ant West on board bike number 13 that's been fast all weekend, joined that lead group of four, but then unfortunately just started to drop off the back of the lead group while Arthur Cece's was making a charge forward. Brian Starring took the lead on board the Desmo Sport Ducati, and despite the best efforts of Glenn Allerton and Josh Waters, they couldn't just quite get close enough to put a pass on. The last time that Starring won was at this circuit and he had it all on the edge, feet off the foot pegs, just keeping that concentration. You can see the concentration in his eyes. It's been a long, long time between drinks and he really needs to have a good weekend here this weekend. And he did as he crossed the line and won his first race since this time at the start of the year. 
So Starring took the victory from Glenn Allerton in second and Josh Waters on the podium in third place. And the Desmo Sport Ducati team, very happy with that result. Plenty more action coming up on today's show. Stay tuned. We're here at Phillip Island, the iconic circuit, the home of Australian motorcycle racing. Back shortly. Alpine Star Superbike riders are making their way back to the grid now for the start of their second race for the weekend. Of course, yesterday we saw Brian Starring return to the top step of the podium with victory in race number one for the Desmo Sport Ducati team. The first time he's been at the top step of the podium since the first race here back in February, nine long months ago. Can Brian Starring win another one? Can Wayne Maxwell get redemption after yesterday's crash at the end of turn one? We'll find out in 12 laps time. Josh Waters will start from pole position. Daniel Fowlson on the first row of the grid as well, along with Wayne Maxwell. That's a very strong first row with Brian Starring, Mike Jones and Ant West, who's been fast all weekend on row two. Troy Herfoss, Crew Halliday and Glenn Alton. Row three, row four, Arthur CC Senna Agius and Jed Metcher. Keep an eye on Senna's Brock Pearson, Bo Beaton, Billy McConnell, row five, and Max Stauffer, who start from pit lane on the back of the grid. They're ready to go. Right, ready to go racing for Alpine Stars Superbike. Race number two, we're in the starter's hands. Lights are on. Superbikes are go. Another good start from Daniel Fowlson, it looks like, as well. Where's Arthur CeCe's cruising through the field, as he always does at the start of these races? And Fowlson, once again, should lead them down in towards Turn 1. But we saw Maxwell was very strong on the run in towards Turn 2. That's Waters in second place. Herfoss is up into third place as well on that 30th anniversary livery Fireblade this weekend. And Jones is up to fourth place. Allerton in fifth. And is it Brian Starring back in sixth position? And then Wayne Maxwell is behind Brian Starring in about seventh place. Yeah, absolutely. Where is Mike Jones? Because that is going to be the battle of the oh, race. No. Jonesy at the moment looks like he's in fifth just in front. But Maxwell goes around the outside and he's wide. Yeah, Brian Starring also coming into contact there with Jones. And once again on the run in towards turn one. Herfoss is up into second, pushing Waters wide on the run through turn four. Allerton has gone through with him as well on the Spectro Performance Oils. Dot film BMW M1000RR. Of course, Allerton was second in uh, yesterday's race and looking to back it up with another podium here at Phillip Island, a circuit that he loves and also goes very well at. And talking about going very well, Daniel Falzon, another guy that goes very well at this circuit. But look at Herfoss up the inside. Falzon's won three out of three here before. Herfoss didn't have such a great race one, but he's making amends for that right at the moment. Well, we heard him on the grid. He said that he loves these conditions. He thrives in tricky conditions, and he's got good dry race pace as well. And Herfoss has just pinned the ears back, and he's uh, pulled out a small lead over. Now Glenn Allerton moving up into second place down the inside of uh, Daniel Fowles and on the entry into turn 12. That's a uh, high-risk manoeuvre to try and get through there at such a very fast corner. Now Waters unleashes the... Boost Mobile Racing with KTEC V4R. Can't get past a very rapid M1000RR of Glen Allerton, though. It has to slot back into fourth place. Where is Wayne Maxwell? There he is behind Brian Starring. No, trying to go around the outside of Brian Starring. He's ahead of Mike Jones. And a few vital championship points. And Waters just made the move up the inside there on Allerton. That's a nice, smooth move into the southern loop. Just uh, dipped up the inside, and he's slowly working his way forward. The man up front, Herfoss, runs really wide and uh, loses spots there, which puts Josh Waters in the lead. Yeah, Herfoss ran extremely wide there, and it was both Falzon and Waters that had the better track position. And, and uh, a heavy price to pay for Daniel Falzon, who's managed to hold off Glen Allerton, though. Well, he's still in third position, but that just goes to show you, Herfoss didn't do anything wrong, but remember, that wind is rushing that way across the track. And I would say that he got blind wide there, but look at that from Allerton. That was a move and a half into the, one of the fastest right-hand corners on this circuit. You can see Maxwell also all over the, the track trying to find a way past the very rapid Brian Starring on board bike number 67 as they come down in towards turn 10. Maxwell just manages to sneak up the inside and look who is just right behind Brian Starring at centre edges in his superbike debut for Penrite Honda as we see a replay of that moment where F Herfoss ran wide and then was very lucky to keep it on track. The AMX replay showing there exactly how wide Herfoss was on the run into turn four on that last lap. Yeah, super, super lucky on that one. But uh, look at Josh Waters out front now. He's gone flying through with a one minute uh, 32. And then up the inside goes starring again. Sorry, that's... Um, Maxwell. Maxwell. Up the inside goes Maxwell. Good move. 
another man that goes so well around this circuit. Not such a good race one, but uh, he's doing exactly what he needs to do here. It's going to be interesting to see if we talk about the championship now that the two Boost Mobile bikes are up in the podium positions with Allerton uh, stuck in between them, or Troy Herfos stuck in between them at the moment. What is that man in front going to do? Is Josh Waters going to slow down and let Maxwell go through? I've just been watching Maxwell over that last half lap, Steve, and he's riding extremely hard. The bike is moving around all over the place. It's not the usual Wayne, smooth Wayne Maxwell that we can see, so uh, he's really pushing on here. Down to KP. Craig McMartin, the team boss and owner of um, Wayne Maxwell's team. He thinks he might have just held the clutch a little long off the start line. That's why he was back in seventh place as they went through uh, turn two for the first time. Great shot there of Senna Agis coming across the top of uh, Lukey Heights. What a uh, very talented young man that is, uh, making a sensational Superbike debut here this weekend. Look who has also arrived with the lead group. A man that we know is very fast around here at Phillip Island. That blue and uh, yellow combination could only be one person. Crew Halliday's arrived, and I think things are about to get a bit more exciting for Glenn Allison and Brian Starring. Yeah, Mike Jones down in eighth position at the moment for the championship. You can just see there, once again, Maxwell moves into that second position. So it's... Um, Boost Mobile by KTEC Ducati, 1-2 at the moment with a decent gap, one and a half seconds, 1.7 seconds now between the two Ducatis out front. Herfoss in third. And Josh Waters set the fastest lap of the race, a 132.268 on that last lap. A 132.326 for Maxwell, a 33.2 for Herfoss. Glenn Allerton, a 33.8. Uh, Crew Halliday has moved up to fourth place. He's got the better of Glenn Allison and Brian Starring with a 33-166. I said that only a lap ago that he'd arrived and he was about to make things very interesting and he's done just that. Now he's got his sights set on Troy Herfoss on the fire blade in front. Yeah, well, Crew Halliday's a decent rider at this circuit. He's also had good results uh, a couple of years ago. We've said it before, but only guy that could stay with Wayne Maxwell. This sort of track, this flowing track, really does suit his style as he nips past... Um, Daniel Fowles on there. Also, Ant West right behind Fowles as well on the, the Moto Go Yamaha bike number 13. So Jones moving up one position up into uh, eighth place, oh, sorry, seventh place now, just ahead of Fowles. And here comes Westy down oh. the inside of Fowles and couldn't quite get, get past. Fowles was very late on the brakes at the apex of turn 10. No room for uh, Ant West to get through. No, we've got to keep an eye on Westy because he alluded at the start of this race that uh, his Dunlop shop machine would be very, very strong at the start. He's passed um, the man now, Daniel Fowles on, so interesting to see. Let's head down to KP. I've got Mike Jones's crew chief here. Uh, tell us about his strategy uh, during this race and right now. He's in P7 at the moment. He's picking them off. He's just, he just basically played as smart as his um, got a target on his back now, so he'll just pick them off one by one, slowly move ways forward. He pretty much only has to finish from fifth pretty much for the rest of the year and he can possibly win the championship, so it's a bit of a strategy. Thanks. Yep. Playing it smart is uh, Mike Jones. Of course, the action and the pace is really on up front. Through Halliday, look how much he's managed to claw back on uh, Troy Herfoss on the last lap. Crew Halliday was almost a full second faster than Troy Herfoss in front. Crew Halliday did the same lap time virtually as uh, Waters out, well, quicker than Waters out front. And Wayne Maxwell's just set the fastest lap of the race too with a 32.186. Brian Starring there just uh, in front. Mike Jones on a rush forward now. Yeah, 32.186 on lap four for Wayne Maxwell. Uh, the woes from race one behind him now. He's really got the hammer down, uh, doing the best job he can. That gap to Josh Waters, his teammate out front, is slowly coming down. 1.26, the gap now between those two Ducatis. Well, for Wayne Maxwell, that lap, 0.4 off the, uh, the outright lap record here in these windy conditions, I think gives a fair indication of how hard Maxwell is pushing. And as they come across the line, Maxwell was only a tenth of a second faster than our race leader, Josh Waters. Yep. On the Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech Machine, Crew Halliday was a second slower. Oh, sorry, 0.4 of a second slower. Herfoss was a full second slower. Well, there's five points between first place and second place, and that man that we're looking at on screen now needs those five points. His teammate leads the way. He hasn't had such a good year up to this point, but Mike Jones now working his way forward. His crew chief says he only needs to finish fifth, and he 
is doing a good job at that. Trying to hold off uh, a very brisk pack behind him, but Crew Halliday is also trying to find a way, a very brisk Troy Herfoss at the moment. So they come down towards Siberia, Crew taking some very creative lines, trying to set up a pass here as they drive out of Siberia and up the hill where they'll go left and then right through the hay shed, which is a dauntingly fast corner. True, no room up the inside for Crew to get through there. He'll be looking to try and maybe get down the inside at turn 10. Brian starring the next one through with Jones, Allerton, West, Falzon. Senna Ad just rounding out the top 10. Arthur Cece's in 11th, Brock Pearson in 12th, Jed Metcher in 13th, Billy McConnell in 14th, Matt Walters up to 15th, ahead of Ben Burke in 16th, Ted Collins in 17th, Bo Beaton in 18th, Alastair Hugenbosen in 19th, and Max Stouffer is up into 20th place on board bike number 27 after uh, that bike stalled on the grid and they couldn't get it started and uh, having to start uh, either from pit lane or the back of the grid. Well, he's got a good slipstream this time as Crew Halliday. Let's see, he's pulled out of the slipstream, but that CBR Honda, very, very quick down the straight. Dives up the inside, can't do it. Herfoss too strong into Turn 1. Well, it just shows you how much uh, drive they're getting out of the Fireblade off Turn 12, because we know how fast that Yamaha was. At the first round, Crew Halliday pulled out of the slipstream of uh, Glenn Allerton's M1000RR BMW and just sailed on by. So uh, the Fireblade is certainly working very well. I know that Paul Free has been working extremely hard on getting the performance level of that bike uh, up to a standard where Troy can actually fight at the front. Yeah, top speed has never been his problem, but, uh, you know, it's rideability is what they've been working on. Well, Westy down the oh, inside oh! of Glenn Allerton uh, got in there too deep, too late, and he's lost the front on board the Moto Go Yamaha. Allerton saw him coming, just had to stand the Spectro Oils dot film BMW up, and uh, unfortunately, Westy has gone down at Miller Corner. Yeah, that was uh, unfortunate for Anthony West. Meanwhile, Crew Halliday still stuck behind Troy Herfoss. He seems to have more corner speed, but um, Herfoss can, can, you know, like hit the brakes harder. So uh, it's a little bit of a, a catch-22 situation. So Mike Jones also struggling at the moment to find his way past Brian Starring. So Jones sitting in sixth position, Starring in fifth. We saw how good Brian Starring was in yesterday's wet race. Doesn't seem to have the, uh, the same pace today. But the uh, very windy conditions probably playing havoc with the, everybody at different areas of the track as we come round through turn 12 now. And onto the Gardner Straight. We're on lap 8 of uh, 12. And there's unfortunately a long walk back to the pits for uh, Ant West. Here's a replay. You can see him come up the inside of Glen Allerton on the Spectro Oils dot film BMW. And unfortunately, uh, you can see there on the AMX uh, replay, just didn't get it right at the apex. Lost the front end. Allerton, who'd stood it up and allowed uh, Westy to go through then set sail for Siberia. And meantime, Crew Halliday nearly through. You can't get much closer than that. Try and go around the outside there, up the inside. It's difficult to pass there, Crew, but you can just see every time they get into that upright braking area, uh, both Brian Starring and Troy Herfoss seem to be stronger than the Yamaha riders. They, the Yamahas have got more turning, but they just don't have the upright braking, which is what you really need to pass here. So there's Jones going down the inside of Brian Starring on the AMX uh, replay at the entry to turn two. And that was the favour repaid at turn four for Brian Starring. And he still maintains that position just ahead of uh, Mike Jones as they go across the top of the hill at Lukey Heights there and down in towards turn 10. So both the Yamaha racing team riders at the moment involved in uh, titanic struggles with uh, a couple of men that have uh, won quite a few of Australian championships. Absolutely. It looks like Brian Starring's lacking a little bit of edge grip uh, compared to Mike Jones behind him. You can just see their crew once again rushes in, takes a massively wide line to get a big run onto the straight. But that Fireblade, one of the fastest bikes out there in the straight line, even in the slipstream, he gets up next to him and then hit, when they hit the braking area, um, you know, you just can't get past Herfoss there. Well, and this circuit probably suits that new Fireblade a lot more than what the uh, the old one was because this one does have good top speed, but it's a lot harder to ride on the shorter, trickier it circuits. Like Wakefield Park, Starring runs a fraction wide, but Jones not able to get up the inside. I think if it was for the race win and the championship was on the line, Jones probably would have gone there, but uh, in that situation, it was probably the smarter move to not go there. Well, I don't think that Mike Jones will want to finish fifth in every race and win by one point, that's for sure. For the, for the, he doesn't want to make that happen. There's still a lot of racing to go this year. Uh, he needs to ride better than he is um, and get. he needs to get past Starring, that's for sure. Well, Maxwell is right onto the back of Josh Waters now on the last lap. 
It was a 32-9 for Waters, a 32-6 for Maxwell. The lead over the uh, third place rider, Troy Herfoss, is about five seconds. So the two boost mo mobile racing with K-Tech machines are in a, a class of their own at the moment with Maxwell now stalking his teammate. Yeah, he's, uh, Maxwell's run a, a brilliant race to this point. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how easy the number 21, Josh Waters, makes it for Maxwell to get past. I'm sure there won't be any shenanigans between these two. Well, and also remember six Australian Superbike Championships between these two riders as they make their way onto the start-finish straight now. Very impressive Phillip Island stats for uh, both of those riders as well. Wayne Maxwell has had 51 starts here at Phillip Island for 21 wins. That's in Superbike class only. So uh, very impressive for him. And Josh Waters has had 36 race starts for eight wins, but 24 podiums along the way. And remember, Josh Waters wrapped up his third Australian Superbike Championship here only a couple of years ago. Yeah, Maxwell's definitely on a mission here at the moment. He's doing a real, real good job. So there is the current live point score situation. 268 for Mike Jones, 233 for Wayne Maxwell. So clawing back vital points is Maxwell, starring back to third place with 230 points. Herfoss would be up to fourth place with 200, and Glenn Allerton fifth with 194. But that could change depending on where Wayne Maxwell finishes, if he can get ahead of his teammate, and also if Brian, uh, Brian Starring and Mike Jones swap places a few more times, there could be another change in points there. Well, as we've seen in the racing from yesterday, anything can happen. Like, you think you're in the lead, you're out the front there. Maxwell in front as he made that pass down the straight before um, he's got his teammate behind him everything's safe but you can see they're still riding hard these guys because Maxwell he wants to prove he's the best Ducati rider he doesn't want to come into the pit and um, have to say well you know thanks to um, uh, Josh for slowing down and let me win Maxwell wants to prove that he's the best well they were both just fractionally back into the 33s on that last lap so they come round to uh, complete this lap now we're on lap 10 so that will be uh, 10 laps completed as we set off on the penultimate journey around Phillip Island. 32.9 for Maxwell, 33.4 for Josh Waters. Remember the fastest lap of the race was a 32.186 for Wayne Maxwell. That was set on lap four. Top speeds also nudging around the 3.10 mark, except for Mike Jones, who's recorded a 316 kilometer an hour top speed. Senna Agis, 315. Uh, Arthur CC's 315 as well, but pretty much all of our top riders all the way back to about 14th or 15th position, all 300 kilometres an hour plus on the uh, Gardner Strait. Yeah, these bikes, are so, they're so standard, but they're also so, so fast nowadays, almost as fast as the World Super Bikes that are racing here on the same weekend. So, um, so close. Mike Jones is through now on the number 67. Good to see that. Moves up another spot. I don't think Brian Starring has given up uh, on fifth place just yet. He's going to try and get drive out of that uh, Siberia corner and up the hill now. Yeah, I don't think he'll be able to stay with him because I think that Mike Jones has got more mid-corner speed. And, I mean, mid-corner speed is everything around this circuit. If you've got grip um, and turning, you can have good good lap times. And, and uh, just to me, it looked like um, Starring was just missing something there on the edge of the tyre. So Maxwell leads, Josh Waters in second, Halliday up to third, Herfoss in fourth. As we come round to get the last lap forward now, it is the Wayne train chugging away to another win here at Phillip Island. That would make it 22 race wins for Wayne Maxwell. That's at Phillip Island only, and only on a superbike. When you uh, count all of his uh, race uh, races they've all been on superbikes here as well so great results for, uh, so for Wayne Maxwell here we go there's Allerton Senna Agis and uh, Arthur Cece's having a good battle it was only a year or so ago that Senna Agis was spending a lot of time riding push bikes and training with Glenn Allerton before he went overseas now he's actually uh, racing with him on track on board a superbike yeah I don't know what happened with Allerton he was looking pretty strong at the start of the race uh, but now he's just drifted back a bit and it's a matter of to see whether Senna's going to try and dip up the inside of him there on this final lap and Arthur Cece's he's so close to um, a decent seventh position, but he's back in ninth at the moment. Uh, and Daniel Falzon's hanging in there too. Yeah, Daniel Falzon doing a good job just rounding out the top 10 on board that William Adams Cat Yamaha R1 as Maxwell comes across the top of Lukey Heights for the final time and down in towards 10. Turn 10 is going to be at Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech. 
one, two, as Maxwell comes round to uh, negotiate these final two corners and set sail for the finish line. 25 championship points on offer here for Wayne Maxwell and Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech. Waters will take second place. Can Crew Halliday hold off Troy Herfoss for third as they come to the line? But congratulations to Wayne Maxwell. Perfect opportunity to uh, make amends for yesterday's crash at race two in race number one of the weekend. Crew Halliday takes third place. Herfoss fourth and Mike Jones with a very close fifth place as they came across the line. In actual fact, Mike Jones said his fastest lap of the race on the last lap and Glenn Allerton just holds off centre Adjus in the run to the line for seventh place. Adjus in eighth, uh, Arthur Cece's in ninth and Daniel Fowlson takes tenth. But uh, the very happy Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech team after that one. Yeah, absolutely. What a, what a team those guys make. Pretty formidable way to finish off the year. You can just see there a bit of a Pat on the back from Maxwell to, to Josh Waters. Um, great job there. Starring, they need to find a little bit of edge grip if they want to improve in the final race here this weekend. Um, definitely missing something there. Well, there's confirmation of your results. The final victory margin for Wayne Maxwell, 1.599 seconds over his teammate Josh Waters. Crew Halliday in third, Herfoss in fourth, just fractionally off the podium. Mike Jones, a great ride in fifth place. Brian Starring in sixth, Glenn Allerton seventh. Senna Adjus, sensational debut this weekend on board a superbike in eighth. Arthur CC's in ninth, and Daniel Fownsland rounds out the top ten. Eleventh, Brock Pearson. We haven't heard much of him this weekend. Jed Metcher got a great result in race one. Benny Burke uh, on the number 60 there. Yeah, good result from him. Billy McConnell, Matt Waters um, finished today too, which is good to see. Ted Collins back to the championship. Welcome back. Bo Beaton, 17th and 18th. Maxi Stauffer from the pit lane. Well, the highlights for Superbike race number two for the weekend. Saw Daniel Falzon once again get an absolutely cracking start from second on the grid and led the field through turn one. But Josh Waters got a great start. And Wayne Maxwell was back to seventh place early on. Yeah, it didn't look good for Wayne, did it? But Glenn Allerton wanted to make his way forward through the pack. The Yamahas were also back and had a lot of work to do. Crew Halliday there making his way through the field. But Jones back in seventh position. Perfos made an early bid for the lead when he got to the top of Lukey Heights, going up the inside of Daniel Fowles, and Glenn Allerton made a bold pass through turn 12, only a couple of corners later, pushing Fowles back to third, but Fowles wasn't finished, and he was happy to go back into second place as Josh Waters and Wade Maxwell started to move their way through the field on the Boost Mobile Racing with Paytech Dick Addies. And then Herfoss ran wide, really wide. And Josh Waters said, thank you very much, went past everybody. At that point, we thought it was gone. Allerton wasn't mucking around. He wanted a piece of the action and a podium too. Maxwell down the inside of Starring at turn 10, trying to uh, move forward and get maximum points in his championship battle. Pulled out of the slipstream of Glenn Allerton and moved up into third place only a couple of corners later. It wasn't long before it was uh, going to be a 1-2 boost mobile by, by K-Tech, and it was. It was uh, about a 1.77 second gap. Anthony West was on a rush forward too. He was. He tried to get down the inside of Daniel Falzon at turn 10. Then he went up the inside of turn 4 of Glenn Allerton, unfortunately, just couldn't quite get the bike stopped and turned at the apex and lost the front end. And away they go again, and it looks like there was a big battle between the number 67 and Mike Jones. Very important for Mike Jones, but Brian Starring on the Desmo Sport Ducati just didn't want to give up that spot. Wayne Maxwell pulled out of the slipstream of Josh Waters on the Gardner straight to assume the race lead and was never headed as they made their way to the line for a Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech 1-2. Maximum points for Maxwell. Josh Waters in second place, and in third place was Crew Halliday. Crew Halliday from the Yamaha Racing Team. Uh, you weren't happy with race one, but race two, a P3. Congratulations, you've turned it around. Yeah, thanks, Kate. Uh, yeah, yesterday wasn't you know, the most ideal conditions. Um, I'm not going to lie, and everyone knows it's probably my weakest point in the wet. It's something I need to improve on for next year. Uh, but, you know, it's all said and done. It was yesterday, but today, you know, we had a great setup in qualifying. Uh, you know, I, I, I noticed a lot of guys use two uh, two tyres in qualifying. We only used one, so it's probably our mistake that we didn't use two and get a bit further up there in the in the start of the qualifying. So you know, st coming from row three, it's a little hard when you got Wayne, Wayne and Josh riding so good. So you know, to come back and uh, you know get on the podium, it's a great deal for Yamaha. And uh, yeah, just pumped with it. Looking looking forward to the next race. Well done. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, in P2, Josh Waters. A very successful weekend for you so far. A formidable team, you and Wayne are. Um, tell us about your race. 
Yeah, it was good. Um, the start of the race, I was, I think I was back to fourth or fifth, and the wind, geez, it was blowing us around. So um, Troy had a huge moment, and I was able to capitalise on that and then put my head down, and then, yeah, it was good. Um, great for, for the team to get a 1-2, and, um, yeah, I really enjoy riding the Ducati. Well done, Josh. We'll see you in the next race. And in P1, Wayne Maxwell with some very important championship points there. Yeah, like, I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, my team, Boost Mobile with K-Tech, it shows how good the boys work. And um, to have a top rider like Josh come in and play wingman for me, you know, like, I'm sure if he wanted to win that race, I would have had a lot more hard work. So massive thanks to him for playing his role on the team. Uh, my guys yesterday, I apologise for that. That was sort of unnecessary, you know, just one of those things. And um, when we look back at yesterday, we sort of uh, can see that we would have been really made a real dent in the championship if we could have got a strong result yesterday. But, um, yeah, we've moved on and, um, yeah, let's see if we can repeat it again this afternoon. Teamwork, race the dream work. Good luck out there for the next race. Yeah, massive thanks. And, like, obviously to Pirelli, um, like, you know, just the absolute domination of the tyres, unbelievable, so consistent. So big thanks to them, to their commitment for not only me, but the whole sport. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Well, congratulations to Wayne Maxwell, but it's time to take a breath after a very exciting Alpine Star Superbike race. More coming up after this short break. Only a couple of corners to go until they grid up on the grid for the final time this weekend, and we go racing for the Alpine Stars Superbike class. Remember, this is the penultimate round. There are only two races left next weekend at the grand finale at the Bend Motorsport Park after the conclusion of this race. Yeah, this one's going to be an absolute ripper. I can't wait to see this one go. Everyone's had a couple of opportunities now to change and tweak their bikes, find those last tenths, um, fix some problems that they've had. We should see the likes of Troy Hollerfels be more competitive further up. Well, front row of the grid is Josh Waters with that new record lap. Daniel Falzon in second and Wayne Maxwell, the man that is trying to claw back points on Mike Jones in third place. And the second row of the grid is Brian Starring, Mike Jones and Ant West. Troy Herfos, Crew Halliday and Glenn, Glenn Allerton are your third row. Arthur CC, Senna Agis, great job by him this weekend. And Jed Metcher round out row four. Brock Pearson, Bo Beaton and Billy McConnell back on row five with Max Stouffer, Ted Collins and Matt Walters back on row six. Massive shout out to Senna Agis, that ride in race Number two was absolutely sensational. And also good to see Max Stouffer get out there after some early difficulties. But we're ready to go racing. Final time for the Alpine Stars Superbike class this weekend. Lights are on. Superbikes are go. Good start once again from Fowler, but I think Waters has got the jump this time on board the Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech Machine. And as they make their way down towards turn one, it is Glenn Allerton moving forward, but not quite enough to take the lead because that lead was Wayne Maxwell, and then around the outside was Josh Waters. Yeah, that was so, so tight. Crew Halliday was up there too. Mike Jones got a better start this time around. Arthur Cece's got the start that he always seems to get. So Arthur Cece's up there in fourth or fifth position at the moment. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened to uh, Glenn Allerton. He was on the move, and then as they come out of turn one, he was back in about eighth or ninth position. Just telling you, now he's ninth position back there on that Spectro Racing Oil BMW, and as they come down in towards turn four for the first time, oh, and it's Maxwell is down once again. He hit the back end of Troy Herfoss's machine on the entry into turn four, and that's uh, two DNFs, it looks like, for Wayne Maxwell at this round. He certainly did not need to do that, and Mike Jones would have seen that. That has certainly taken the pressure off Mike Jones, who sits there right up behind Herfoss at the moment. Let's see if they can get that bike going. It's all over. I can tell you what, Maxwell will not be happy. Let's have another look on the replay. He's gone up the inside. Herfoss has come across. No room there. He just tried to make that move too early. The line got chopped off and uh, it was all over for Wayne Maxwell. Looked like uh, Arthur Cece's also had to uh, change his line, so he's lost a couple of positions as well, Arthur as they come up around the top end of the circuit now for the first time. Our runaway leader is Josh Waters. Herfoss in second. Jones trying to go around the outside in turn 12 in third position. Well, it looks like the Yamaha team have found some pace too from the earlier races that we've had. Uh, as he moves into second place past the Seabauer Honda, and uh, good move, good job there by Mike Jones. He's, this is a good comeback for him. Well, Jones is showing a lot more pace in this one, but remember last time out, it was his teammate, Crew Halliday, that had all the pace. Yeah. Halliday, at the moment, is back in 11th position behind Ant West and Arthur CC. Yeah, it looks like, I mean, there was quite a bottleneck into Turn 1 off the start line, and I just feel that he got caught up in that melee, uh, which uh, is certainly not helping him. Brian Starring, he's back down the pack a little bit too, so uh, not the best start uh, for Starring. 
a lot of work to do for him. Senna Agis is doing a good job there behind um, that gaggle of riders. He's in seventh position at the moment. Yeah, right on the back of Starring's Desmo Sport Ducati and uh, also in front of uh, Jed Metzer, Arthur CC's Crew Halliday and West Brock Pearson back in 12th position. Maxi Stover's up to 13th position. Matt Walters in 14th. Billy McConnell in 15th. Ben Burke 16th. Alastair Hugenbosen in 17th. Travis Wyman all the way from the Moto America Championship has just moved up to 17th, getting the better of McConnell. And it uh, looks like McConnell, might, something may have happened to him because he's dropping back down through the order. Yeah, it's been a tough weekend for Billy McConnell, but I'm sure we'll see him at the bend next weekend, firing on all cylinders. Halliday's on a move. He just put a big overtaking manoeuvre on down the hill in towards turn 10. So we'll keep our eye on board bike number 65. He just got the better of Ant West, and he's moved up into 10th now. Josh Waters is on a mission. He's 1.3 seconds in front of this group now as he comes up over the line shortly. We'll get a lap time for you, but I think it's going to be a pretty impressive one for his first flying lap out there. Over he goes. Slipstream for the Honda man, Herfoss, and he makes his way past. It is a 32.8 first time through. Oh, Herfoss, how was the corner running speed into turn one from Herfoss? It was almost like he didn't let the brakes on at all coming down there, and he's got the better of Jones. Allerton has closed right up as well on board the M1000RR, right behind Allerton, making a move on the inside. The narrow line was Brian Starring, trying to get up the inside of Daniel Falzon, who's hanging with the leaders at the moment on board the William Adams Cat Yamaha R1. Great to see the privateer from South Australia oh, once again. That is someone wide. very wide. That was Falzon, I think, that was uh, taking the oh. Troy Herfoss line from uh, race two. Gee. Right out onto the ripple strip on the exit of turn three. And Allerton, look at that, up into third place now. Yeah, he's doing a real good job, is uh, Allerton, to uh, get past um, Mike Jones there. And uh, he's showed great speed all throughout this weekend. Of course, new sponsors, the Spectro Performance Oils, Dot Film, BMW, doing a great job on their debut here this weekend. It's, no. ta it's taken these guys a little while to settle down. It's been a little bit all over the place at the moment, hasn't it? Daniel Falson was actually the fastest man on the first flying lap with a 132.842. And as they settle into lap number three now, down to KP for a quick report. Yeah, I've got Craig McMartin here, Wayne Maxwell's team boss. Just a comment from you, Craig. Well, I don't know <laughs> what to say, really. Um, it's racing, I suppose, isn't it? Um, maybe, uh, I don't know. It's uh, disappointing, but um, championship-wise, but we've still got... Um, for the bikes. Still, still got Josh in the race. Um, so, yeah, we, we'll just concentrate on Josh and, um, yeah, hopefully he can he can bring it home for the team anyway, so maybe get the round win, hopefully. And, um, yeah, well, championship's not looking good now, so let's go to Taylor Bend and see what we can do. Thanks, Craig. Thank you. Well, I'm pretty sure that uh, Josh Waters would have got the message that uh, Wayne Maxwell is out due to this incident on the AMX replay down there at Turn 4, Miller Corner. Geez, we've seen a lot of incidents there uh, over the last month or so. Since it was renamed Miller Corner, there's been a lot of incidents. Oh, no, we've got a couple of others down. Looks like he's at Crew Halliday. And holding Senna. up his hand, Senna Adjus. Yeah. And it uh, looked like there's someone else in there as well. Daniel oh, Bowser, no. it looks like as well. A few guys down there. It's going to be interesting to see. You can see that uh, the airbag's gone off there on um, Senna Adjus's suit as well. So uh, let's see if we can get a, re a replay there. They come into the braking area. Senna is around the outside there. Uh, that's, uh, uh, yeah, Falzon that's Falzon. Looks like on. Lost Falzon it. lost the front. Um, hey, like they're all blaming everyone, uh, but you know, racing incident, um, looks, just looks like Falzon lost the front there, probably just got on the gas a little bit too much. The front, the weight come off the front, down it went, everyone else was uh, concertining behind him, and uh, bang, that's how that happens. And unfortunately, crew was on the outside. The first person to get taken out when you lose the front is the person on the outside, and yep. Senna had nowhere to go. So we're back to uh, this hectic battle now for uh, second position, currently being led by Troy Herfoss. And uh, Starring's brought himself back into this. He's able to stay with these guys now, isn't he? So it's good to see Brian Starring and Desmo Sport Ducati um, regrouping uh, after race two, and um, he's doing a good job at hanging in there. Definite podium shot. Well, and the other thing is that Brian Starring also realises that he is on now for second place in the championship behind uh, Mike Jones, who will go to... The the next round at Tail and Bend next weekend with a pretty handy points and buffer over both Wayne Maxwell and Brian Starring. Troy Herfotz wants nothing more than to put this five blade on the podium and if he can, try and reel back in Josh Waters who now has a very substantial three and a half second lead. He's also set the fastest lap of the race with a 132.644. Compared to his race time from race one earlier on today, 
Uh, oh, sorry, uh, Wayne Maxwell's fastest lap at 132.186. Conditions are about half a second slower, it looks like, at the moment. Well, um, this I, is a, this is an awesome battle. These guys aren't going to be setting super fast lap times no. because they're carving each other up. Absolutely, and they're they're all behind Herfoss at the moment. And I think that the CBR at the moment on new tyres, I think it's like really good. But they've got to do a little bit more work on used tyres. You can just see there as some um, Herfoss got on the gas out of that corner, it was uh, moving and bucking um, out of the corner, not good. Also, the Yamaha of Mike Jones, similar sort of thing. A lot of spinning and sliding from the rear of these bikes now. So that new tyre grip has disappeared. Now it's all about setup. Now, this is where the rider at the back of this pack on board, bike number 13, could very well come into the equation. Ant West has been fast all weekend. They've found something with that Motogo Yamaha, and he's now on the back of this five-bike frame train that is battling for second position. It is still Herfoss in the lead with Jones starring Allerton, but look out for Ant West because at the end of the race, his Dunlops will probably have a fraction more grip. Well, we'll find out, but West has certainly come from nowhere. He's uh, caught right up to the back of this group now, and uh, he'll be taking a bit of a breath. He's still got six laps to do something. Uh, a lot of traffic to get past. It'll be a lot of hard work, but I'll tell you what, Ant West, he's a fighter, we know that. He's fastest lap at 32.9 on lap three for Ant West. In fact, uh, Street, Troy Herfoss hasn't managed to do a 132 in this race. Neither has Mike Jones. So uh, outright pace. Ant West on board bike number 13. The Motogo Yamaha is right up there. Let's have a look on the last lap. It was 33-0 uh, for Waters, 33-9 for Herfoss, 33-9 for Starring, 33-8 for Jones, 33-9 for Allerton, and a 33-0 for Ant West. I'll tell you who else is having a great race. Jed Metcher, 727 Motorsports in seventh position, just behind this group too. So uh, keep an eye on Jed Metcher at the back of your screen there. If these guys can't get past Herfoss on the Honda, um, he might join the fray. Also to uh, Brock Pearson and Maxi Stofer in ninth and 10th position as well. The two uh, Superbike uh, rookies having a, uh, a great battle back there for the positions inside the top 10. Looks like a pretty good battle between the two Starring. Kawasaki's of uh, Matt Walters and Ben Burke as well. Starring's gone through now on Herfoss, but Herfoss late on the brakes, a little bit more top speed. Allerton looks up the inside too. Well, Troy Herfoss commented before race two that these conditions are something that he likes because it's a bit challenging and it makes the racing just that little bit harder. And when it comes down to putting in the hard work, Glenn, uh, Troy Herfoss is uh, not scared of doing that as Crew Halliday has made it back to the pits. Obviously some problem with the uh, Yamaha Racing Team R1 after that incident down there at turn four. Well, he's going to head back out. Everything looks OK. He's going to head back out and at least finish the race and, and not finish on a bad note. So it's still Herfoss that leads, but Starring has worked his way forward now up into third position. Allerton in fourth. Mike Jones has slipped back to fifth place. Westy in sixth. Yeah, Westy was able to catch the, that group quite easily. But if you think to uh, the race we've had before, just race two, uh, he lost the front. So I'd say he's got uh, front confidence problems on passing. So although he's caught these guys, uh, outbreaking them is going to be probably difficult. He's taking his time to try and weigh up where he's going to do it safely. Well, Herfoss still leads. This is his 50th ASVK round start on board a Superbike this weekend, and he's running the special 30th anniversary Honda Firebraid livery on board the uh, the machine. The special Mick Doohan inspired helmet and the uh, the Alpine Stars leathers as well. Was that Weston just running very wide on the exit, uh, the entry into uh, turn 12? Then Steve, and it looks like where's he gone? gone off the back of this uh, pack? So it uh, looks like Westy's had a problem up there at the top end of the circuit. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely gone, isn't he? Like, uh, he's, is that him all the way behind Jed Metcher now? Oh, and Allerton's run way wide too there. He's got, oh, a, he's flat got, a, he's got a flat tyre. That's the issue, the tyre's gone. Well, we saw a flat tyre at the, uh, the first round at that exact same corner with Tommy Edwards in the Super Sport category. Yes, so normally when that happens, you can pick something up or there's just a lot of stresses on these. So I, I would say that he's perhaps either overstressed the tyre, they've gone for a, a soft compound rather than a safe compound, or, uh, which is, you know, it does happen on a racetrack, he may also have uh, just hit some sort of object which has flattened it. A quick update from KP. We've got Dion Coote here, team owner of Penride Honda. Troy Herfoss, what would a podium mean to him? Can he hang on to this race pace? Yeah, look, I think uh, he's holding second well now. Um, he's got three people breathing down his neck, but uh, 
yeah, this this podium would be very important to Troy. Um, yeah, it would be a special moment for him to, to get back to Phillip Island the way he should be. Thanks, Dion. Thank you. Yeah, Dion's looking a little bit nervous there, isn't he? And as you would, still four laps uh, to go of this 12-lap race. And um, Perfoss is there, but there's a lot of pressure on him. So to, if he does finish second uh, with all of that pressure behind him, it's... Um, it's going to mean a lot. Well, the other thing is that Troy Herfos loves nothing more than rolling the sleeves up and having a good old hard fashion stout for uh, a position on the podium as they come across the line to complete eight laps. It is Jones, Jones that goes into the lead. Starring goes with him as well. Herfos drops back a couple of positions. Allison is still there. Then it's quite a large gap back to uh, Jed Metzler taking up the running now in sixth position. Arthur CC's up to seventh. Pearson up to eight. Stouffer in ninth, Ben Burke rounds out the top ten with Matt Walters in 11th, Alastair Hugenbosen in 12th, and Travis Wyman has made his way up with a little bit of carnage that we've seen into 13th position. Well, it's going to be interesting to see how they handle this now because Mike Jones obviously sitting behind um, Herfoss for quite a while there. The lap times were in the higher 33s, so we'll keep an eye on the lap times and see if uh, Jonesy stretches that pace out, probably tries and drops a bit. Meanwhile, we haven't even mentioned our leader, uh, Josh Waters, he's like five seconds up the road. Yeah, just circulating very consistently in the uh, the mid to high 33s is our race leader, Josh Waters, on that Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech Machine. As you can see, an AMX replay there of Mike Jones coming down the inside. Brian Starring going past as well. Allerton ran a little bit wide on the exit. Herfoss showed once again he had great corner ex mid-corner and exit speed. There's our race leader. We've definitely got the message that uh, his teammate Wayne Maxwell is out after that incident at turn four. So free reign now for Josh Waters to uh, take the race win. And if they stay in exactly the same order as they are now, 287 points for Mike Jones, 246 for Brian Starring heading into the last round. So that would be a 41-point championship lead. Yeah, and Wayne Maxwell, the big loser, back down there in third place, still staying on that 238 points. And look at Herfoss. He's actually in with a shot too, if he gets two good results uh, at the bend and a good result here of moving up uh, into perhaps third in the championship. Well, and you heard what Maxwell said, uh, was it uh, yesterday afternoon when he was talking to KP? He actually said... But if you're not first, well, it doesn't really matter. So I don't think he's worried about coming second or third in the championship. He desperately wanted to win that championship and make it Here he goes up row. the inside. That's oh, a big Herfoss, move. Herfoss. How sideways was he? He's both run both Allerton and himself very wide into turn four. I don't think Allerton's um, all that happy with that by the, uh, the body language and the head shake there. Yeah, that was a late-breaking manoeuvre up the inside. But he made it through. Um... But, yeah, definitely took Allot wide there. So I'm sure they'll be having a bit of a discussion about that afterwards. And I think that shows how determined Troy Herf Herfoss is to try and get that bike up onto the podium. Absolutely. Starring. He's got a bit of work to do now to catch up to his former teammate, Brian Starring, because uh, Starring's got a few bike lengths lead, courtesy of Herfoss running a little bit wide there. But Herfoss has got a couple of laps to try and reel back that distance now. Yeah, he certainly has. I mean, when he actually got overtaken on that straight by, those, uh, by the whole group of guys, actually, I noticed that just before that he hit a puddle. Let's just have a look there. Look, he's sideways in there, just goes through, leaves Allerton nowhere to go. Uh, he's lucky that there was a bit of a gap there because he could not have braked or tipped in any more than that. That was like on the absolute limit. Well, and Allerton was lucky that there was a bit of, conquer, a bit of yeah. uh, asphalt on the outside of the track as well and not grass because otherwise that would have been Allerton down at turn four. Another one to uh, add to the collection of uh, turn four victims in this race. Well, starring there sitting in third position at the moment. I'm sure he wants to try and get past Jones if he can. Jones won't want to be playing any shenanigans at the moment, will he? He no, wants he to stay won't. safe. Well, and he realises he's got a very handy points lead over Brian Starring. And the difference is, that was that something falling off there? I think that was Brian Starring's wing because Brian yep. Starring and Mike Jones came into contact there. You can see the wing missing off the, the uh, left-hand side of the Desmo Sport Ducati. That's now on the outside of Stoner Corner, lying in the gravel trap. Well, there's the first warning shot. That's how desperate Brian Starring is to get through. Uh, touching going into that corner. That's like just one of the scariest corners to enter. You, it's pretty much the front's real light there. And uh, boy, so easy to go wide, but he got away with it. And the other thing is, how is that going to affect the handling of the Desmo Sport Ducati over these final two laps? Well, the wings on these road bikes as we have another look there. Mike's tipped in and look how close Brian Starring is. He clips the back wheel, tries to carry more speed in there. The reason he's done that is to help him into the braking area. I think Mike Jones knows now that he's got company. 
And you can see on the brakes there as well, like he's hard on the brakes, nearly running into the back of uh, Mike Jones too, but uh, gets a good drive onto the straight, the starring in the slipstream again. Herfoss still making no headway. That's about a one and a half second or a one second gap to Starring. So it looks like he's going to be where he is. But Starring now, all to play for. Waters has got this one to lose with a three and a half second lead. But boy, keep an eye on these two guys. Well, on the previous lap, it was uh, both uh, Mike Jones and Brian Starring battling. The lap before that, they'd both set their fastest laps of the race. Watch way. this, watch this. He's up the inside. Starring's got the inside this time and made the pass clean. That was a big move from Brian Starr and considered they just dropped about 0.7 of a second off in their lap times over the last lap due to that uh, hectic battle. And what this has done is brought Troy Herfoss back into the equation as well because Herfoss is closing them down. And as they get up towards the top end of the circuit, it could be uh, right for Troy Herfoss to try and put a manoeuvre on Jones to try and get back up onto the podium as well. Definitely found more grip in the rear end of that uh, Ducati this time around. The Desmo Sport team have been working hard, but it's all about this man, Josh Waters. What a comeback to racing. He's had no problem with the uh, side grip on that bike all weekend, Josh Waters, and he's riding off into the sunset. His lead is over three seconds as we come back through the final corners now. But this is where the real interest is. Down into turn 10 for the final time. Jones can't put a move on Brian Starring. Looks like Starring may hang on for second position, but Jones gets great drive out of turn 12, and it will be a very close run to the line as these two come down the garden straight for the final time but no doubting who our race winner is it is the second boost mobile race victory for the weekend and they'll celebrate josh waters takes the victory in race three brian starring holds on for second jones in third troy herfos just misses out on the podium for the second time this weekend another fourth place for the penrite honda in troy herfos's 50th asbk superbike round Congratulations to Boost Mobile Racing with K-Tech and Josh Waters. What a sensational ride. A fastest lap of the race at 132.644 and a victory by over 2.3 seconds. Yeah, I think it could have been more than that, but uh, Josh was really lapping it up. He slowed down. Uh, he was in the 34s on those last couple of laps. So a brilliant ride by him. Bit of a discussion going on there between those guys. I think yeah. that was uh, Herfoss and Waters just discussing what happened down there at turn four early on in that race yeah. and why there was uh, no bike number one at the end of that race. Well, I think the discussion will be with uh, uh, Herfoss and uh, Maxwell later on. Well, they've had some uh, titanic struggles over the years and unfortunately that one resulted in one of them crashing out at turn four. But there is confirmation of your results. Josh Waters takes the win by 2.374 seconds over Brian Starring. Mike Jones in third. Troy Herfoss in fourth. Allerton back up to fifth place after that incident with Herfoss at turn four. Metzger in sixth. Arthur Cece's in seventh. Brock Pearson in eighth. Max Stouffer in ninth. And Ben Burke rounds out the top ten. Yeah, that was a great result for Max Stouffer too. Matty Walters in 11th. Um, Alistair Hugenbosen in 12th. Travis Wyman gets 13th from America. Good result from him. Brendan McIntyre in 14th. Last point. Trent Benese, good for him on the Suzuki. Paris Hardwick, Sloan Frost from uh, New Zealand in 17th. Billy McConnell, uh, 19th, the last of our finishes. And there's a, a whole gaggle of guys that uh, pretty much um, had issues throughout the race. Yeah, unfortunately, Ted Collins in there as well, uh, crashed out or didn't uh, make it to the finish leg out early in that race. But Josh Waters, extremely happy with his results over the weekend. There's Craig just explaining to uh, Josh Waters what happened. Yeah, you can just see in the background there the World Pirelli guys as well. The guys from the World Pirelli having a bit of a look at the teams and seeing what's going on too. So let's have a listen. The first question Josh Waters asked, is he all right? I think that goes to show the character of Josh Waters. Let's have a look at the Honda highlights of Superbike race number three. And it was Wayne Maxwell and uh, Josh Waters that got off to very good starts as they came round through turn two for the first time. The field uh, was getting away well, but Mike Jones has got one of his best starts of the, uh, of the race so far. And then this big incident, this championship impacting moment at turn four. Yeah, and you can see the head shakes there. At that point, uh, Wayne Maxwell knew it was over and um, makes his way back to the pits, all to do it again next weekend. Herfoss and Mike Jones down the straight. This was, was going to mean a lot. But in the meantime, out front, look at the number 21. Josh Waters, uh, he was blasting off into the distance. That was pretty much the last time the field saw Josh Waters because then they were involved in their own titanic struggle. Jones, Herfoss, Allerton, Falzon at that stage was in the, uh, in the battle as well. 
And then we saw this moment at turn four. Falzon loses the front end, unfortunately takes out an innocent crew, Halliday. And uh, also Senna had just nowhere to go in that incident as well. He was out of the race after what had been a sensational debut on board the Penrite Honda Fireblade. Brian Starring didn't want to finish fifth, did he? He was working his way through the pack. Allerton was there up the inside too. Um, there was a bunch of guys that wanted to get on that podium positions and then it was starring that was side by side with her as they headed down the straight but that cbr had the gas down the straight on the brakes late he was too and they just get behind starring there and then once again bang always everyone was just caught up behind him yeah ed west had caught up to this lead group and then unfortunately this moment a flat tire after he was looking poised to try and make a maneuver on these riders for a position on the podium. It would have been his first podium of the year. Then this big moment, Herfoss up the inside of Glenn Allerton. They both run wide. Allerton lucky not to end up on the grass. And then another one in the same sort of area at the track on the exit of turn three, Brian Starring hitting the back end of Mike Jones's machine and losing a wing on the Desmo Sport Ducati V4R. Yeah, doesn't get much closer than that, but it was this man, number 21, that uh, crossed the line and what a win it was. Let's head down to KP. Mike Jones, a very handy points lead going to the bend for Yamaha. What did you think when you saw Wayne Maxwell go down? Oh, look, it, it happened again, and I just honestly could not believe it. I, I just, you know, um, I, I really hope that Wayne is OK. Um, first and foremost, you know, he's a strong competitor, and uh, whilst I may dislike him as a, as a competitor, I certainly uh, don't wish any harm on anyone. So, firstly, I hope that he's OK. Um, secondly, of course, uh, as, as, a, uh, as we're challenging for the championship, you know, the points are so, so important for us. So it takes a relief off heading into the next round. Um, I was hoping that I'd be a little bit stronger here this weekend overall, but um, but you know, hey, we you have to take uh, the good with the bad, and um, uh, we roll on to to the bend, and I think we'll be pretty strong there. Great ride, nonetheless. Thank you very much. Cheers. And in P2, Brian starring some excellent battles out there for the Desmo Sport. You caddy, you even lost a wing. Ah, uh, yeah, that was um, pretty close to action-packed racing, wasn't it? I uh, I've come back with one less wing, um, which I've only got myself to blame for, but. Uh, I don't know. I think I'd be scared if I was on the sideline, but I don't know why it's different on the bike. Well done, a fantastic P2. Thank you. I'm glad uh, this weekend I've managed to, to beat my championship rivals in two out of the three races. Um, it's the best I could manage, and a uh, big thanks to my personal sponsors, Consent to Go, uh, Ymark, and uh, Surety Life. Very sweet strawberries. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. And in P1, fastest lap and a victory. Josh Waters, a great start, a dominant performance. Is this Waters 2.0 or what? Yeah, uh, huge thanks to the team, Boost Mobile, with uh, KTEC suspension. It was awesome. So gutted for Wayne. Um, yeah, but really, really happy this weekend for me. He's been awesome. So hopefully we can roll over to uh, the bend and I can challenge there also. But... Yeah, and we can get, you know, some more one-twos for, for our team. It's great to see you at the front. Congratulations. Enjoy this win. Thank you. Thanks very much, KP. Congratulations to Josh Waters and Boost Mobile Racing with KTEC. Plenty more action coming up here from Phillip Island. Michelin Supersport up next. Welcome back to Phillip Island. The Michelin Supersport riders are making their way round onto the grid now for the final race on today's program. It is the second and final race for round six of the championship for the Michelin Supersport riders. Litras comes into this race with a five and a half point championship lead over Ty Lynch after race one earlier today. Tom Bamrich, Jack Passfield and John Litras will all start from the front row of the grid with Scott Nicholson who crashed out of race one, Dallas Skier and Ty Lynch on row two. Jacob Hatch, Jake Barnsworth and Reese Billing fill out row three. Three. Row four is Archie McDonald, who couldn't start the race earlier today. Tom Drain, back from America. Brendan Wilson, a good result from him in fourth uh, on that grid. John Quinn, Tarbon Walker, Declan Cranberry on the fifth row. Noel Mann, Jack Flavelle and Luca Derning round out row six. Yes, very important race here for the championship. The championship won't be won in this race, Steve, but uh, any mistake could see the championship start to slip away for any of our championship protagonists. As we get ready to go racing, the green flag is about to leave the back of the grid. Red flag at the front. 
You can almost see the tension on Jack Passfield's face as he starts from second place on the grid. Won the race earlier today. Lots are on. Michelin Supersport is go. Look like another good start from Tom Bramage. Also a good start for Ty Lynch on board. Bike number 85 from the second row of the grid. But as they make their way down towards turn one, I think you'll find it will be Littress sneaking up the inside that can't quite get ahead of the very fast starting Tom Bramage once again on board. Bike number 44. It is Littress in second, Passfield in third, Lynch in fourth. And coming up into a fifth place, is that Dallas Skier? It looks like it could be Dallas Skier as they head round the southern loop and onto that back straight and into the Casey Stoner corner for the very first time. Tucked in behind the screen. Tom Bramich doing a brilliant job there, but he's got a lot of pressure from the man behind him. John Littress looks up the inside and it looks like he's uh, made a move really early through the Miller corner. Yeah, Littress into the lead. Ty Lynch up into third place, getting the better of Jack Passfield as well. He's seen his championship rival go to the lead of this race and uh, pin the ears back has Ty Lynch, of course, the race this morning, Steve. Started in very cloudy conditions, and then it was only halfway through the race that the rain came, and the race was red flagged, and the half points awarded. Completely condi uh, different conditions here this afternoon. Brilliant sunshine, not too much breeze. In fact, conditions are almost perfect. Absolutely. There's uh, a lot of pressure in this race between the guy leading and the guy in third at the moment. That's Littress and Ty Lynch. As you said, five and a half points in between those two guys, and the pressure is fairly and squarely placed on the shoulders of Ty Lynch in third position at the moment as John Littress leads this one. And we know how dangerous John is when he leads a race. He gets a bit of clear air in front of him, and he just seems to take off. Tom Bramich there in second position, doing the best job he can, and a great job at that, hanging in there too. Yeah, Tom Bramich's got plenty of speed this weekend. He's been fast in all the practice and qualifying sessions and he also scored his first pole position of the year. In fact, it would also be his first pole position in the Michelin Supersport class. So Bramich goes to the lead and sitting in second place is Littress. Running very wide there was Dallas Skier with an interesting line through turn one. Ty Lynch has gone up into a third place. Paxfield now back to fifth place. So uh, the South Australians, uh, Skier and uh, Ty Lynch, just... Uh, got a little bit of work to do to try and get onto our leaders that have just fractionally broken away. Yeah, Passfield, um, the winner of the race earlier today, is uh, just drifting backwards a bit. He showed such good speed in the first race. Perhaps they've made an adjustment on that bike that he's not happy with, uh, but uh, once again, Dallas Skier looking to go around the outside there. Couldn't quite do it there. That's uh, a good overtaking opportunity, but he will be looking at the guys in front and seeing Tom Bramich and John Littress uh, taking off up the road, so he won't want to be wasting any time at all. Don't want to give too much of a gap and lose a strip, slipstream to these guys, but look at that, Tom Bramich back in front. But did you see also how late Ty Lynch was into turn four? The bike was really starting to uh, move around. We mentioned Tom Bramich has got plenty of speed this weekend. He's also hungry for that first victory in the Michelin Supersport category. Well, he led the first race today. Oh, that is not good! The two Yamaha men are down. That is not good for the championship. Not good for Ty Lynch. Not good for Dallas here. You can see how disappointed he is there. Dallas tried to go up the inside, taking him out. He's already got injured legs. Uh, broken ankles, I think he's got, hasn't he, Ty Lynch? So this is such a disappointment for him. I'm sure that Dallas didn't mean to do that. Let's have another look on the AMX replay as they head down. Bang, just up the inside. Nothing... Uh, for Ty Lynch to do. He's pretty much just a passenger in that. No room there. Bang. He did try to stand the bike up, but I think by that stage, uh, Dallas had tried to get into a position where he was able to get up the inside, but the door just closed on him. He was left with nowhere to go. But they almost came together at turn four earlier in the lap as well. So I'm pretty sure Littress is going to get a board now to uh, indicate that uh, Ty Lynch is out of this race. Tom Bramich still leading. Littress trying to come up the inside. Can't quite get it done. Passfield is starting to close in. Remember Passfield's race this morning, though, Steve? He was uh, keeping his powder dry over the first lap or so. Then he started that charge, moved forward, moved up into the lead and started to uh, pull away at the front. So these guys are taking their time to build into this 10-lap race. Uh, lap time's in the 37s at the moment, 37-2. Uh, for Tom Bramich, our leader. He is the fastest man out there on track that last time around. 37-3 for John Littress behind him, and Passfield was a 38-1 that time. So uh, work to do for Passfield, but you're right. He, Passfield's a sort of rider. He's methodical. He builds into these things. Well, and also this morning, 36-675 was Jack Passfield's fastest lap of the race. So uh, he's, at the moment, uh, probably about one and a half seconds off that, uh, off that lap time. The conditions are way better now than they were this morning too. So I wonder if Jack Passfield's got some sort of um, issue 
that uh, I mean, it's, it, it, it all looks good, uh, but he's just not doing the same lap times that he was able to replicate in qualifying and also now. But 37 3 that time round for Passfield, so he must have just had a bad lap. Up the inside looks to go John Littris, but can't do it. You put up the inside of uh, Tom Bramwich there, but you can see Tom Sawyer was there and just went a little bit deeper into the braking zone on board the Apex Group Bear Bird Yamaha R6. The Caboolture Yamaha Sol Invictus rider just had no way to try and get past on that run in towards turn one. They are still glued together, though, as they make their way through turn three. Passfield desperately trying to uh, hang on, but on the last lap, it was the uh, 137-142 fastest lap of the race. So that uh, incident at turn 10 is under investigation. Yeah, you I mean, could, uh, you could probably pretty much say that was a racing incident, Steve. A uh, racing incident, but one that Ty Lynch w didn't want to be involved in, <laughs> and Dallas Gear either, really. <laughs> I mean, they were both just going for it. Dallas tried to nip up the inside. Um, there wasn't a lot of room there, but he'd already committed, and, um, you know, they were sort of side by side when they both went down, but uh, you'd have to look at it quite a few times before you fully apportioned the blame to one rider. Well, we did mention that you wouldn't be losing, or you wouldn't be winning the Supersport Championship in this race, but it could have a big impact if anything was to go awry. And unfortunately, that's exactly what's happened for Ty Lynch on board uh, bike number 85. Well, it's not over till it's over because John Littress is still a young rider and uh, finishing second won't be on his card. No, exactly though. right. He'll, he'll be desperate to try and go for the win and maximise the point haul in this race. But he's got a very determined Tom Bramich in front of him on board bike number 44. Bramich has not had a win since stepping up to the Supersport class. He is also a multiple Australian champion in Supersport 300 and also Moto3 as well. Yeah, and, and if history speaks, this is Tom Bramich's come good track. Like, he literally, you know, if he's having a year of battles, he just comes good at Phillip Island. Here or Winton is where he's um, his favourite tracks. Well, let's head into KP for an update from Pit Lane. are obviously far more favourable for him. He doesn't know why the lap times are slower. He thinks he might just be trying a little bit too hard. He just needs to settle down the nerves and just get into a flow and rhythm. Well, he's done that exactly, Kate, because he's just done the fastest lap of the race with a 36.978. And look where he's arrived. He's arrived right on the back of John Littress's Caboolture Yamaha as they make their way out of Siberia and head up the hill towards the hay shed. They'll flick it now right and go through this dauntingly fast corner and then up towards the top end of the circuit across the top of Lukey Heights. And Passfield is in a position now, Steve, where he's going to get some slipstream advantage as they come out onto the Gardner Strait. Yeah, he was 0.6, um, so his dad can um, take a breath. He was 0.6, if not uh, this lap, even quicker uh, than the other two guys in front. And he's right on the back of them now. He's caught up to them, which just points to, you know, he's a thinking rider, he's methodical. Uh, he takes his time to warm everything up. He doesn't make too many mistakes, and uh, he's put himself in the box seat now. He knows he's caught these guys, and when you can catch from that far back, it gives you a, a, an extra added confidence as well. Well, we're on lap six now of the 10-lap uh, scheduled race distance. Littress tries to go up the inside of Bramich, but Bramich once again just lets the brakes off. His corner running speed into turn one is uh, absolutely sensational. Littress has tried a couple of times to try and get past but there's no way he can get past Bramich on the brakes down in towards turn one. So the provisional point update with the Ty Lynch crashing out, we now see 179.5 points for Littress and 159 for Ty Lynch. And Tom Bramich has really brought himself back into the challenge for second place in the championship. And if things go awry at uh, the Bend Motorsport Park, could even end up being crowd champion because there's 51 points up for grabs at uh, the final round. But there's also 25 points up for grabs here. And as you pointed out before, Steve, anything can happen. Unfortunately, motorcycles have only got two wheels and they fall over every now and then. Absolutely. Absolutely right. And look at uh, John Littress right on the back wheel of Tom Bramich now. Tom Bramich, uh, low 37s there. Once again, Jack Passfield, the last lap he did was another 36.7. So that explains why he's right in the back. And he, we saw, we've seen him threatening to pass in a couple of different spots. He's got a lot of entry speed over John Littress in front of him, but John just can't seem to find a way past Tom Bramich. So out of turn 10, they come up towards the uh, very fast run that starts at turn 11 all the way around through turn 12, where they are now, and then out onto the Gardner Strait. 
just looked like a little bit of uh, front chatter there through that uh, final turn here at Phillip Island for the number 44, Tom Bramich. Once again, Littrus tries to pull out of the slipstream. Can't quite get it done, but here comes Passfield. Passfield up the inside of Littrus. Littrus goes back to third position. And that obviously will change the championship point standing too in the favour of Ty Lynch. So that will put more pressure on Littrus in third position. Yeah, the difference in points between second and third is two championship points. In actual fact, it probably would be smart of John Littrus to not get involved in any oh, battles that uh, could, uh, could jeopardise that championship lead and just take a solid 18-point haul into uh, the, uh, the end of this race. But uh, Passfield up the inside of Bramich at uh, Miller Corner, turn four. Yeah, he's uh, on a mission now, isn't he? He's really just shot through, doing a fantastic job there, uh, Jack Passfield. He's uh, weighed the two guys up in front of him. Uh, he's got much better corner entry speed and uh, mid-corner speed. He's been able to carry that through. And uh, now Tom Bramich gets to watch and learn from the man in front. Well, Passfield was looking very comfortable this morning when the rain hit. He was out the front. Oh, he's just had a bit of a moment as he tipped it into uh, the top of Lukey Heights there. He's obviously pushing extremely hard to try and get to the lead of this race and now try and make a little bit of a gap over Tom Bramich and John Littrus. I would say, looking at it, oh, he's definitely got the slides going on there as um, Jack Passfield. But uh, Tom Bramich probably in the braking area is just lacking a little bit, the final bit of the braking area. Um, and... Maybe he's not spinning, he's not willing to let the bike get out of control as much as uh, Passfield on the exit. Passfield's definitely not scared to spin the wheel up, but meanwhile, up the inside goes Bramich, runs a little bit wide, but Passfield stays there again. You were saying that Bramich was missing a little bit in the braking area. I don't think he's using the brakes into turn one. The no. speed with which he's going in there, yeah. he seems to be running in so much faster into turn one than both Littrus and Passfield. He's That's why he's back in the lead. Yeah, he's definitely got a really good line into there. He uses, he gets a good drive out of the final turn. Doesn't spin it up too much. Um, if you if you do spin it up, you lose. Um, you know, you can lose drive. Litrus always looking up that inside line there to see if he can do it, entering the corner nice and tight, but uh, not really threatening to do so there. Well, Tom Bramich has been doing a lot of work with uh, Wayne Maxwell, giving him a, a lot of tips. Gave him some tips before race one, where he scored a very solid second uh, place in the race earlier on today and been doing a lot of training at Moto Tuesdays as well on the Avales in preparation for these final two rounds of the championship, the big double header weekends here at Phillip Island and next weekend at the Ben Motorsport Park in South Australia as we come up towards the top of Lukey Heights now on lap eight of ten. So two laps to go as they cross the start finish line at the completion of this lap. It is still Passfield that leads. He's also done the fastest lap of the race on lap five, a 136.764 on the last lap. All of our lead riders were in the 37s. Then Scott Nicholson in fourth was in the 38s, along with Archie McDonald back out on the grid. Great ride from Archie up into fifth position, and he'll be extremely happy with that after the disappointment of not being able to uh, get the bike out onto the grid for the first race this morning. Absolutely. Remembering that Archie, the youngster, is also riding the older model R6, not the new one, not with the one with the upside-down forks. Jack Passfield goes around the outside there into turn one. Big move by him. Bramich in second. And John Littrus just a couple of bike lengths back at the moment. Yeah, so Littrus actually looks like he's a little bit further behind than what he has been on the last couple of laps. You can see Bramich tried to get up the inside of uh, Passfield, but Passfield just pulled out too much of a lead through turn 11 and 12 and then down the Gardner straight for uh, Tom Bramich to come back. But this is where Passfield's strong. That's where he's overtaken uh, Tom Bramich on the last couple of laps. And if anything, he's probably pulled a bike length uh, on the brakes there into uh, the turn four area. And Litchus has closed right up onto the back of Bramich as well. This is going to be a little bit of a uh, cat and mouse game now to see who positions themselves perfectly for the run to the flag in a lap's time because uh, this is the penultimate lap, Steve. Well, if I was one of these two guys here right now and I could stay with um, Passfield, but Passfield's starting to put the pressure on, isn't he? I would literally be trying to just save everything I've got, relax as much as I can, knowing that this final lap is going to be an absolute cracker. So if you can just save a little bit of energy now, 
uh, you're definitely going to use it up. Did you see how lap. on the limit Jack Passfield was there as he came across the top of Lukey Heights and down in towards 10? The bike was literally sideways at the same time that he was getting on the brakes. He is riding the wheels off this machine and Tom Bramich is managing to go with him. Litchis has probably just dropped off the back of Fraction. Do you see the chatter then from Litchis' machine yeah. through turn 12? Yeah, the bike few... was really starting to uh, shake as we get the last lap board. One, two, to go. Oh, it's one of the Irish team riders. I think yeah. you'll find that that's uh, John Quinn yeah. has crashed out. John is, Quinn's down. Is that uh, turn one? It's a massive gravel trap wherever he is. No, it looks like it will be Siberia. And there he goes, unfortunately crashing out uh, into Siberia. The big gravel trap there at the bottom end of the circuit. That's a long walk back to the pits from there, John. Yeah, it certainly is. Won't be winning the fastest Irishman in this race, that's for sure. Nope, but uh, meanwhile, Tommy Bramich back in front. This is where Passfield's been strong on the brakes down into turn four, or has uh, Tom Bramich been keeping his powder dry? Well, no, Passfield down the inside. Litchus has a look as well. Tom really left the door open there. It was, you know, he's right out on the right-hand side of the track. Uh, he needs to fix that up for the last lap if, uh, next time he comes here, that's for sure. He takes these wide-sweeping lines on the final lap, and uh, you can't do that on the final lap. You've got to close him down. Passfield on the gas. It's going to come down to the slipstream to the finish line. It is. They head up towards, through the hay shed now and up towards the top of the hill. Passfield's been very fast and aggressive across the top of Lukey Heights here and down into turn 10. Last time he was bordering on being out of control as he got onto the brakes down the hill. He can oh, see it there he's again. Wide, he's he's, wide. Run, he's done it again. Bramich he's run extremely through. wide. And Bramich has got the uh, the run through. But Passfield is now going to get the slipstream as they come out onto the Gardner straight. Two corners to go, Steve, as they come through turn 11, through turn 12. And he's Bramich leading from Passfield. Littrus is also going to get the double slipstream as they come out onto the start finish straight. But can Tom Bramich take his first win of the year on board bike number 44, the Apex Bear Bird machine? Yeah, I think he's going to hang on. Tom Bramich is going to hang on across the line. He takes his first win of the year. Jack Passfield <laughs> in second, John Litch is in third, and I think they're all happy with that result, but none more so than Tom Bramwich. Congratulations on your first win of the year. That was a brilliant ride. Scotty Nicholson comes over the line with Archie McDonald just behind him on the old model R6. So um, Scotty Nicholson redeeming himself from his offer earlier today, getting that fourth position. Archie McDonald in fifth, and Jake Farnsworth. That's a great result in sixth. Yeah, another great result for Jake Farnsworth, who has had a sensational back end of the season. And uh, what a massive effort there from Archie McDonald. Been racing overseas on uh, different machinery to what he's been riding here this weekend. Comes out, rides an R6, the old model. Well, the vintage R6 he's got. The vintage yeah. R6, which pretty much uh, was the same back in 2008, I think it was, as uh, what that bike is. And he finishes in fifth place in a Michelin Supersport race. So well done. But uh, congratulations to Tom Bramich and uh, the whole team. It's a real family affair with uh, Dad Darren, Mum Kim up there uh, helping out uh, this weekend. Of course, uh, Wayne Maxwell, who's doing, been doing a lot of work with, uh, with Tom Bramich. So uh, congratulations to them. It's been a long time coming, but I'm sure they'll be celebrating tonight. Oh, absolutely. What a brilliant, brilliant result for Tom. He really deserved that uh, win with Jack Passfeld in second. John Littrus takes third position. Scott Nicholson, that fourth. Archie McDonald in fifth. Jake Farnsworth, another great result for him. Reese Belling, the bricklayer, is back. Tom Drain from America in eighth, um, who's uh, done these the, the tr flat tracking in America. Brendan Wilson in ninth. Tarbin Walker, 10th. Luca During, 11th. Jack Favell, 12th. Noel Mann, the Irishman, in 13th. Declan Cranberry, 14th. John Quinn takes 15th. Ty Lynch, who didn't finish in Dallas Gear, but for those guys, unfortunately, uh, we'll be duking it out and working things out in the pits later on today. Well, the Honda highlights. We got off to a good start with Bramich getting a fantastic start from pole position, but Ty Lynch also getting a good start. Litchus was also strong, but as they made their way down in towards turn one, it was Bramich that took the lead and slotting around the outside was Jack Passfield on board bike number 42. Scott Nicholson was also very aggressive early, but Littrus was keen to get to the front. Yeah, it didn't take Littrus long to get to the front. Normally when he gets to the front, uh, he's unchallenged, but that wasn't going to be the case because Tom Bramish had had enough. He said, oh, you know what? I'm taking my bare bird machine back past. Dallas Gear was looking very aggressive early on, made a big move at turn one. Then unfortunately, the move went a little bit wrong at turn 10, taking out his fellow South Australian as he just lost the front end on the brakes as Ty Lynch tried to tip into the corner and the two R6s uh, crashed out and ended up on the outside of turn 10. That lead left a lead group of three and they battled from there all the way to the flag with Tom Bramich, Jack Passfield swapping the lead and Littrus seemingly quite content just to sit back there in third place. It was almost like a game of chess at this point with everybody taking different lines into the newly named Miller corner. 
with number 44, Tom Bramich, leaving the door wide open. Then it was uh, the number 31, of course, John Quinn, who went down, and that was the end of his race. Looks uh, the walk of shame back to the pits. There on the last lap, it was Passfield coming up the inside of Tom Bramich to get the running into turn four. He'd done that manoeuvre plenty of times, but then we'd been seeing aggressive moves on the top of uh, Lukey Heights and down in towards turn 10. Unfortunately, he was a little bit too aggressive on the brakes there. Ran a fraction wide. Bramich came up the inside and was able to hold off the uh, hard-charging Jack Passfield on the run to the line with our championship leader, Litris, coming in in second place. Time to go racing for Michelin Supersport now as the riders are coming round to finish off this final warm-up lap. There's Brendan Wilson making his way back to the grid. So far in the two races this weekend, he has been the fastest of the three Irish riders that are all vying for the title of fastest Irishman around Phillip Island this weekend as they make their way down to take up their positions on the grid. We have so far seen Tom Bramage and Jack Passfield both take a win, and they will both start from the front row of the grid in first and second position. John Littress, who leads the championship, is also on that front row of the grid. Scotty Nicholson, Dallas Skier, and Ty Lynch, those two probably not talking to each other in fifth and sixth position, Steve. No, absolutely, after the incident uh, earlier on this weekend. Jacob Hatch is out for the weekend. Jake Farnsworth uh, starts an eight. He's been an improver, and Reese Billing there in ninth. Yeah, Archie McDonald uh, had a good ride in race two, couldn't make the grid in race one after coming back from overseas. Great to see Archie back on the grid in Michelin Supersport. Ready to go racing, the red lights are on. Supersport is go. Looked like a pretty good start from Tom Bramich there as well from pole position. And he will get the jump as they come underneath the flag. But watch Litras come flying down the inside as he has done in races two and three. Slots into third position. Around the outside though, it's Scotty Nicholson on board bike number 39 that takes up the running in third. Can he make a bid for second? No. Where is Ty Lynch? He's back there in fifth position, Steve. Yeah, Ty Lynch didn't get the start that he wanted, but at least he's on the back of that uh, group of four, the protagonists uh, in this race and in the championship, all up in that front group now. But Tom Bramich uh, taking off where he left off in the last race, uh, leading the way with uh, Jack Passfield behind him. These two guys had a ding-dong battle earlier on. Lynch is trying to go up the inside of uh, Nicholson down into turn three. That move is successful as... Passfield goes up the inside on the exit of turn four, the Miller corner, to take up the running at the front. Tom Bramich slipping back to second. And if anything, I think Ty Lynch has actually just dropped off the back a fraction, not doing anything silly, just making sure everything's warmed up and ready to go. Yeah, well, he's got to, you know, warm his body up. He's just riding in a lot of pain um, after the injuries he received yesterday. He was already injured coming in into this um, weekend was uh, Ty Lynch. I can also see there behind him, Archie McDonald got off to a great start, already up in the sixth position on that old a model R6, the number 69 machine there in the back of your screen. Yeah, Jake Farnsworth in seventh. Dallas Ski has gone back to eighth place off the start. Maybe a little bit tentative uh, on the uh, the run in towards turn one for the first time for Dallas Ski, who has been riding incredibly well, well he has uh, been... over the last couple of rounds. So disappointing that uh, he'll be back that far and needs a fair bit of work to do in these first couple of laps to get up with these lead groups. Look, I think Dallas, uh, he's got the skill and the talent, but I think he's probably a bit nervous uh, after yesterday. He came together with Ty Lynch. It was his fault as we go down. Tom Bramich in the brakes. Litras takes them both. Oh, but he has to pull out of it through turn one there. He was certainly had a lot of corner running speed into doing corner on that occasion. So it's Bramich back at the front. Championship leader, Litras in second. Race one winner, Passfield in third. Back to Scott Nicholson in fourth place. And Nicholson has finished very well in uh, both of the races uh, so far. But uh, actually, uh, one of the races he crashed out of, that was race number one. But he was right up the front when he did so, vying for the lead in those very slippery and wet conditions as Bramich just manages to hold on to... Uh, the lead because Litras was very narrow in there coming into uh, Miller Corner turn four, trying desperately to get up the inside on the brakes. Tom Bramich into that Miller Corner, he really does like leave the door open. Earlier on this weekend, he left the door open there and I think Jack Passfield got through. Uh, he needs to learn to start to close that down, perhaps modify his line there. Up through the hay shed we come, the top three have just started to uh, break away. Passfield was the uh, the fastest rider on the first lap, but this will be the uh, first flying lap that we're seeing now. This will give us an indication of the lap times and how they compare to races one and two. 
because we've seen mixed conditions for Michelin Supersport here this weekend at Phillip Island. Well, it looks sunny and dry out there at the moment too, but literally five minutes before this race, we had a, uh, a burst of rain come over the circuit. So that's got to be playing on these guys' minds as well, although it hasn't affected track conditions. You can see them uh, all flat out, knees down on the ground. Um, it still, you know, you do not want to run wide. You don't want to get on a curb. We've had a lot of uh, rain here on the weekend, so the grass is very wet. The, the ripple strips are still slightly damp too. Look at the pursuing pack there. Ty Lynch involved in that pack, but he's now dropped back to sixth position. So you can see there's our top four. The next rider through is bike number 49. That's Jake Farnsworth, who I have to say has been a, uh, a real sensation over the last couple of laps, uh, the last couple of uh, rounds, hasn't he, Steve? Morgan Park, he had his best ever round, first ever podium, and he's been uh, knocking on the door of the other lead riders here all weekend on board bike number 49. Then it's Archie McDonald. Oh, up the inside. Passfield, what a big move. That was a big move, and he made it work too. Like, uh, very tight on the entrance. Got uh, John Littrus worried now, looking over his shoulder. But uh, this man, Johnny Littrus, got a decent lead in the championship. So uh, he won't do anything silly, which is why he looked over his shoulder. He can afford to finish in that position. All he's got to do to increase his lead over um, uh, Ty, Lynch. Ty Lynch is finish where he is and make sure Ty Lynch is behind him. But at the moment, that shouldn't be too much of a drama because Lynch is back in seventh position. Remember, he came into this uh, round with some significant injuries, riding with two broken ankles, is Ty Lynch this weekend. Probably didn't really need to uh, have that crash up there at that exact corner where they just were then, turn 10 yesterday in, uh, in race number two. Tom Bramich rode an absolute cracker of a first lap, 36.7, which is pretty much equal to his qualifying time. So uh, Tom Bramich uh, has got his eye on the ball this morning. Look at the lead that he's managed to uh, build up there. Speaking of uh, building up a bit of a lead, let's head down to the uh, pitch with KP. Yeah, I've just got an update from Jack Hasfield, uh, mechanic, and he's only operating at 85%. Uh, he's still recovering from his fractured wrist and his snapped heel. Yeah, so that's um, that's why Jack Passfield's struggling a little bit too. I mean, these guys, they put on a brave face and when they put a set of new leathers on, boots and gloves, it's pretty hard to see how they're feeling on the inside. But they certainly, if, you, if there is a track that you can um, get away with riding with an injury, it sort of is Phillip Island because there's only just really the two very hard braking areas. Uh, the rest is quite flowing. Well, look who's uh, together on track now. It is, uh, well, there's Archie McDonald, then it's Jake Farnsworth, then it's Dallas Skier and Ty Lynch. The two th South Australians are tightly packed on track once again. Let's hope they're not as tightly packed as they were at Turn 10 yesterday. But I'll tell you what, Dallas Gear looks like he's got a little bit of pace here and uh, looking increasingly desperate now to try and find a way park Jace Farnsworth on board the, uh, the 49 machine. Well, Archie McDonald's just done his fastest lap of the race last time through, which is a 138.2, very similar to John Littrus uh, last time out. So, um, and as you mentioned also too yesterday, Steve, um, Archie's actually riding the older model R6, Correct. which doesn't have the uh, the significant updates of the uh, the new model, but it just goes to show you that the Yamaha hasn't changed a lot over the uh, the years. It has been the mainstay of uh, supersport racing here in Australia for many, many years, but he's also coming back and riding a motorcycle, nothing like the bike that he's been riding overseas all year. So, uh, a big, uh, big congratulations to uh, Archie McDonald on board bike number 69. Now, there in the bottom of your screen, you can see the updated championship points. So if it stays the way that it is now, that lead will go out to 25.5 points with only two races left in the championship after this third and final race here at Phillip Island as Dallas Skier moves up a position, getting the better of Jake Farnsworth on the... Gardner straight. Yeah, it looked like Skier just needed to get a couple of laps uh, under his belt to get the woes of um, race two out of uh, his system and uh, now it's status quo. Let's head down to Kate. I just got an update from Tom Bramich's mechanic that he's still a second off his PB here, so there's heaps more in him. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, the thing with that, as they talk about that, is that um, obviously it is quite windy here as well today. So uh, Tom is uh, consistently lapping in the 36s, which is pretty impressive stuff. His last lap through was 36.7. So the consistent thing for Tom to do is to just keep on. If he can bang out 36.7s uh, lap after lap, which he's doing, it's going to, you know, he's going to get to that checkered flag first. Yeah, well, he's done two laps within 0.022 of a second of each other so far in the last three laps. 
So uh, really consistent uh, lap times there from uh, Tom Bramich. And at the same time, he's opening up a small lead. It was bordering on about a second as they were halfway through this lap. We'll wait and see what it is at the completion of this lap. You can see that is a relatively significant gap between our race leader, Tom Bramich, and second place rider, Jack Passfield. But we have seen several times this weekend, Steve, Passfield get a little bit behind, but then seemingly at half race distance, get some more speed and start to uh, close in towards the end of the race. Right, oh, absolutely. And it is very tricky out there with these wins. I mean, as they come down that straight, they're going to get blown off line. They have to recalculate all their lines. Um, perhaps with the wind running across the track here, they can afford to go a bit tighter. It'll help them turn out of this southern loop. But as they head into Casey Corner, you've got to be real careful because you can end up running really wide. So you perhaps have to dip the throttle here a bit to get on that inside line and make sure the wind doesn't blow you out. Sometimes when it's gusty, it makes it even harder. But Jack Passfield is on a run at the moment. 36-4 for him. Uh, this is not what uh, Bramich wants to see. On the AMX replay, we see again, have a look at this, up over Lukey Heights as we look at the back of the, the Bear Bird machine. Nice slide out of there from both of those Yamaha riders. And John Littrus hidden in the middle. Yeah, Littrus pushing forward there and uh, really getting involved in this, uh, in this battle at uh, that run over the top of Lukey Heights. But at the moment, uh, he's just dropped off the back. Has uh, Litris on board the 308 machine, the Kabulcha Yamaha Sol Invictus entry. And uh, Passfield really putting it on. At one of the races, I think it was uh, race one, no, race two the other day, Steve, he was 1.3 seconds behind Bramich. And within a lap or two, he was 0.4 of a second behind. So it's not out of the realms of possibility that Jack Passfield on board the Stay Upright Rider training R6 will be able to uh, reel back in our race leader, Tom Bramich, who is currently enjoying about a one second buffer over the uh, the 42 bike of Passfield as they come onto the Gardner straight to complete six laps. Well, yeah. The John... gap is 0.6 of a second. Yeah, okay, so that is coming down, but it's one thing to catch up to Tom Bramich. It's another to pass. I hope his team has told him uh, to close that line down heading into uh, the Miller Corner, the newly named Miller Corner, because basically uh, Tom there just, he leaves the door wide open. And, um, you know, that's going to be where Passfield attacks in my mind later on in this race, if he does catch him. Other than that, it's going to be pretty hard to pass Tom Bramage. Yeah, there's Scott Nicholson on board uh, bike number 39, doing a great job. Something uh, wagging off the side of uh, Scott's bike there too, just on the right-hand side. I'm not sure what it was. Some uh, it looks like an electrical wire or something. Perhaps he's had contact with someone. You can see it there just on the right-hand side. Archie McDonald's doing a good job, just catching up to the back of him too. And then right behind Archie McDonald is Dallas Skier. Then it's Ty Lynch back in seventh place. So Ty is going to uh, lose a couple of points to uh, Littrus in this one. You can see that flapping there that you were just talking about, Steve. Not so sure what it is. It's either a piece of uh, race tape or... Well, it, it does look like a, a wire or something. It that's does look like a wire, behind, yeah. Behind the, uh, the fairing. And look at this. Passfield is right up onto the back of Bramich now. We predicted this a couple of laps ago that he does show a lot of pace towards the mid and late session of area of, uh, of the races so far. He was 1.3 seconds behind in a race yesterday and managed to claw his way back. And that's exactly what he's done now as we come around to complete lap seven. This is going to be a sprint over the last three laps to the chequered flag. Look, Bramich and Passfield have pulled a massive gap over uh, Littrus. The gap now is just over six seconds. It's one thing to catch. I mean, Tom's been doing all the hard work out the front. Passfield's there now. He's got a little bit of a slipstream. Um, if he feels he's got massive pace advantage, I think we're going to see him um, rip past him and try and take a bit of a lead. But other than that, I think Passfield should probably sit there and, for the last lap. But for sure now, he's going to be eyeing up this inside move because look at Tom there, all the way over to the right. And once again, he's left the door open. Through he goes, oh. and he's made the move. Passfield runs a little bit wide, but holds it. Almost contact there at the apex of Miller Corner, turn four. But we saw yesterday too, Steve, that when Passfield got into the lead, he was very aggressive across the top of the hill at Lukey Heights and down into turn 10. Three laps in a row, and the third occasion on the last lap was where he ran in there a little bit hot, ran wide. Tom Bramich came up the inside. Here's an AMX Superstore's replay of that overtake. As you said, he was just in there nice and deep on the brakes on the inside line. Bramich left the door open, and Passfield uh, accepted that uh, invitation to go through into the race lead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, 
The strong part of the circuit for Bramich, though, is out of turn 12. And we know that if he can get a good run out of turn 12, get in the slipstream, he's got enough pace with his Yamaha to uh, get back past Passfield. So that will be on his mind. It's Tom's turn now to learn something about Passfield and try and pick up where he can be stronger on this circuit. It was so good to see these two riders both get their first victories of the year over the weekend so far as well, because Passfield coming back from a, a very significant injury at the beginning of the year that he's missed pretty much the entire season. And Tom Bramich, who's had gremlin after gremlin after gremlin in the setup of that uh, Yamaha R6 over the, uh, the past uh, two years, has really seemed to have got a handle on it now. The suspension's working for him. He's very at home on the motorcycle, and both of them scoring their first wins in the Michelin Supersport category uh, in the two races that we've had so far this weekend. One of them, I feel Steve, is going to go home with two victories under his belt. <laughs> well, that is for sure. Because Nick Littrus is not going to challenge them no. now. The gap is out to over eight seconds. Look, back Littrus to is, our uh, third place yeah. rider. Littrus is now thinking championship mode. He's uh, just going to finish. He can... Oh! oh Passfield. Passfield has gone down. Overly aggressive into uh, the Siberia area. And he has crashed out of the race. And unfortunately, the stay upright machine is not upright. And it's in the gravel trap at Siberia. And Tom will know now he's got a massive lead. And that moves Littrus up to second and puts uh, Nicholson on the podium at the moment. Well, and after Scotty Nicholson's uh, well, big crash at the top of Lukey Heights, vying for the podium in race one, looks like he's given the marshals there the thumbs up. Let's see if we can see what happened. Just gets hard on the brakes, goes down the gears and just lost the front of bike number 42 as they went into Siberia, tumbles through the gravel trap, and you can just feel the disappointment by looking at that photo. Yeah, he just held that front brake, brake lever on too hard, asked too much of the front tyre on the lean angle as he went in there. He, he, he needed to be letting the brake lever off as he went in there, and perhaps if, if he was too hot, run slightly wide. But uh, he asked too much, didn't get away with it. Well, Passfield did set the fastest lap of the race on lap five, that 136.480, but it is Tom Bramich. And he's going to be the man that go home, goes home with two victories from three starts here at round six of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul from the spiritual home of Australian motorcycling, Phillip Island. And uh, only half a lap or so to go now for Tom Bramich as he rounds through Southern Loop and comes through Stoner Corner down into Turn 4, Miller Corner. The current lead is 8.6 seconds over John Littrus. Archie McDonald is actually up onto the podium in third place now, getting the better of Scott Nicholson. So what a return to Australia for Archie McDonald if he can score a podium in this Michelin Supersport category. But Nicholson is not going to let him have it without a fight. Nicholson goes down the inside at turn four. Can't get past Archie at the apex of turn four. There is another late-breaking opportunity for Nicholson, though. That's at the top of the hill as they come down from Lukey Heights and into turn 10. Yes, definitely on between these two guys at the moment. Uh, Archie McDonald what a brilliant job he's doing out front there. Scott Nicholson um, on the Michelin shot. Yamaha just tucked in there. He looks up the inside. He can't quite do it. Loses ground into the Hayshed corner. But look at this. Tom Bramich. Uh, this is going to be the best and easiest win of his life at the moment. Massive lead. He is just loving this lap. The crowd on the outside. He can see him there. And uh, boy, oh boy, Tom Bramich. What a ride by him. It was a great struggle with Jack Passfield, but Passfield went down in that struggle, and Tom Bramich is going to take his second victory of the weekend. Onto the Garden Straight now for Tom Bramich for the last time, and the Apex Group Bear Bird Machine takes its second victory of the weekend. Congratulations to Tom and the Bramich family all here this weekend, and also John Littrus, who will take second position and extend that championship lead even further over Ty Lynch, who at the moment has only moved his way up into fifth position. And Archie McDonald and Scott Nicholson are coming to the line. And it looks like Archie McDonald has just managed to take the final podium position from Scott Nicholson right on the line. There was less than a tenth of a second between them as they came across at that chequered flag. Ty Lynch will finish in fifth and Dallas Skier in sixth. Jake Farnsworth in seventh. Reese Belling will take eighth. Tom Drain ninth. And Brendan Wilson rounds out the top ten. What a race. What a race. And, uh, I mean, that is Bramich all over. He was on the limit uh, all the way through that race. Passfield tried a little bit harder, pushed his luck, didn't hold it together, and that allowed Tom Bramich to just do his thing. I yeah, reckon Johnny Lichus is pretty excited with that second position and also the fact that he's managed to extend that championship lead. Well, it takes pressure off him as we head into Tail and Bend next weekend.
worth the current points lead. He's even a position to where he could win it, depending on what happens in the first race. But let's recap those results. An 8.1 second win for Tom Bramage on board his Yamaha YZF-R6 over John Littress. And Archie McDonald rounds out the podium in his return to the ASBK after a successful season overseas. Scott Nicholson took fourth, Ty Lynch in fifth, Dallas Skier in sixth, Jake Farnsworth seventh, Reese Belling ninth, Tom Dr oh, sorry, eighth, uh, Reese Belling in eighth, Tom Drain in ninth, and Brendan Wilson rounds out the top ten. Jack Favell in eleventh, Declan Carberry in twelfth, Tarbin Walker in thirteenth, Noel Mann takes fourteenth, the last point to Luca Durning. Sixteenth was Jack Passville, of course, he didn't finish, and John Quinn as well. It was Tom Bramich that got a good jump on board bike number 44 and led the field down in towards turn one. Jack Passfield was in second and Nicholson, a big move around the outside to move up into third. Tom Bramich with that wide line allowed Passfield to go up the inside. He looked at it, but he didn't quite make it. Littress was there, then he got through and uh, Bramich knew that there was a race on. John Littress was in this too and Scott Nicholson was right there but dropped off. Then it was down to a group of three. And look at this move, nearly all the way up the inside, but can't quite make it. John Littress, at this point, he was still thinking about the win. Well, and while our championship leaders were battling out the front, it was Ty Lynch that sits in second place in the championship. That was a little bit further back in the field. He was battling with Jake Farnsworth and Dallas Skier. And as you can see them going down the straight here, had a fair bit of work to do early on in the race. Archie McDonald was making his way forward on the older R6 as well. Um, battling up to what would be a brilliant return to Australia for him. But what a shot this is of those three hot uh, young guns going over the top of the hill. Then it was Passfield up the inside. Bramich tried to get back up the inside but couldn't quite do it. Had to back off and Passfield put the hammer down. Put the hammer down and unfortunately he then went down at Siberia corner with two laps to go, leaving Bramich eight seconds ahead of Littress. But the battle was really on for the podium with Nicholson and Archie McDonald fighting it out all the way to the chequered flag. These guys probably didn't know that uh, they were fighting for that final spot on the podium, but boy, oh boy, what a final lap it was for this man, Tom Bramich on the Bear Bird Yamaha. Over the line he goes and takes his second win of the weekend. Down to KP to hear from our top three. P3 Archie McDonald, what a great way to return to Australia. That was an excellent battle there with Scott Nicholson. It was, I'm surprised the jet lag isn't kicked in, but it's just, just out of, I've been here for a week now. Uh, got the 600 down at Broadford for a test. Bit sketchy, but we come into practice and the bike had a failure with the gear shift. So Dad had to drive to Melbourne yesterday, come back and repair it, but we're finally on the podium. It's all, all worth it, you know, it wasn't for nothing. I'd like to thank all the boys, you know, I have Dad, all Gal Motor, everyone, but I couldn't have done it without KYT, Free Sport Boots, um, Onboard Moto, Ear Mold Australia really helped me out with a new set of earplugs and everyone else just putting in their work to make this possible. Well said, Archie. Thank you. And in P2, John Littress extending your championship lead. Now, did you play that safe or was it championship points that you had in mind? Um, yeah, played that race a little bit safe. Like, um, I didn't feel like I had the front grip to go with those boys. They were really going hard, so um, I didn't feel like I had the grip in the front end to do it. We just needed to work on some more setup, but it was a good weekend and we've um, come out with a decent little gap on the points, so um, yeah, on to Calm Bend. Congratulations, well done. Thank you. And in P1, his second win for the weekend. Consistent laps, great start. Uh, you really found something, Tom Bramage. Yeah, for sure, Kate. I'm um, really happy, you know. I can't thank my team, Luke and Ivan, Mum and Dad, and all my sponsors enough for, you know, it's been a tough year and uh, we feel like this has been coming for a while, but to finally um, get a round win and a couple of race wins is, um, yeah, it's awesome. You go enjoy that win. I will, thank you. That's it for today's show. The 2023 My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championship presented by Motul kicks off next weekend supporting the World Superbike Championship at the Phillip Island Grand Prix Circuit. As always, SBS and SBS On Demand is your go-to destination for live and free coverage kicking off from 1pm Australian Eastern Daylight Time. And for the latest news and event details, head to asbk.com.au.